is actually pretty nice. So 1987, which is 20, more, 25 years ago, Scott Crump, which uh, invented FDM technology, tried uh, to fix one of his daughter's toys. So he used a hot glue gun to, to do something like this. And he had like a eureka moment. Uh, and he thought, hey, this is a good way to do things. So the idea is pretty simple. There's some filament of plastic that is being heated and is being moved around a robotic arm that goes on a table uh, which is creating the, the model. So we are doing one layer and the, the table drops a little bit. The idea was very, very soon. To make it right and to make a good quality model, we are continuously evolving. So the first machine was sold two years after we started and, this, the, and we are still releasing new machines. You will see the Fortus machines are more designed for the manufacturing organizations, so the materials are really robust. So you will see them everywhere where very strong mechanical resistance is needed. So especially automotive and aerospace makers, but also universities which are more designed to work with mechanical engineers. So if we look at MIT, for example, which is a good example. So MIT has the Media Lab. They are doing exotic things. The Media Lab would have the polyjet machines more than the Fortus machines. The mechanical engineering school or the aeronautical engineering school is more to, uh, more likely to have an FDM machine. So it's really depending on what is your typical application. We are saying that the Photos machine are more designed for manufacturing. So we can use it for almost everything with the exception of putting uh, models inside the body. For example, if we look at this model, then uh, this is, uh, shows the geometry of a specific patient. When you go into the medical world, you have a very, very specific model. Uh, everyone is different, everyone's anatomy is different, and we like to be able to give the doctors a way to experiment or to see where they are going before the operating room. So almost for everything that is medically related, because our world is a world of of customization. If you have one piece, then 3D production system is really the way you want to go. So you see it more and more. A good example is an iPhone cover or a, or a phone cover. Today, if you go to buy it in the store, you would pay $20 for, for a phone cover, where of the $20, the production cost is probably 3 or $4. But you have to choose what is on the shelf. Today you see more and more places on the internet and sometimes in stores in bigger places in the world where you would choose your design if you want star or little hearts or to put your name on the, on the printed part and the cost is not something exotic, it would be a few dollars more. So you see with mass customization things like phone covers, pen holders that are being printed. So you see places where people want to express themselves being used in 3D. You don't see it yet in mass produced uh, product. But this is some of, somewhat of a vicious cycle because the products are being made for mass production. When the, when the market adopts more of, the, of these products, we will see more and more people being, doing productions with those 3D printed uh, productions.